It's time for Twig This Week at Google. What a wild show we had this week. Jeff and Gina are here. We're going to talk about the thing I can't talk about. Maybe the Pope will tweet and give me an indulgence. We'll talk about that, too. And uh, why German tourists should never be allowed in Paris. It's all coming up next. Yes, it is on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 207, recorded July 17th, 2013, The Silence of the Leo. This Week at Google is brought to you by LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your direction, like affordable business and personal documents you could trust. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code TWIG to get $10 off at checkout. And by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of over 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash twig to get a free design consultation. It's time for Twig This Week in Google! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you your This Week in Googlers. Uh, on the left, Ms. Gina Trapani of SmarterWare.org, Lifehacker.com, founding editor, and uh, I keep forgetting f a columnist for Fast Company. No more. Well, occasionally, but not not as not as much. Anymore I just read a column from you about eating frogs in the morning for breakfast. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, somehow that came up again. Uh, I had written that actually a really long time ago. No kidding. It came up and got some steam online, yeah, and, and uh, on Twitter. Uh, yeah, that was a while ago. That's so weird. Hey, evergreen. I like it. I'm getting that a lot with these social news sources. Like I use Prismatic, which I love, mm -hmm. but I'm getting sometimes two or three year old articles. Yeah, I've gotten a few people mentioning, saying, like, oh, hey, thanks for this article. And it's like, wow, I wrote that a while ago. Well, that's, uh, but uh, hey, I'll take it. This is annoying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> also here, Jeff Jarvis, who is birthdayized with his Google Peacock. Peacock. I can't. You know, forever <laughs> after, I'm going to think Peacock when people tilt their head with Google. Well, and now it's, the great thing is we now know it could have been Peacock. It totally could have been. No, it couldn't. Because you can't no. say your Wi-Fi password. Right? Yet. Right. How do you yeah. like your glass? Still liking it? I'm uh, enjoying the laughs I get when I demonstrate it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Gina? I don't see you wearing it. I don't wear it when I'm sitting at my computer, but I do wear it when I go out on the weekends. In fact, I was just at uh, San Diego Pride this past weekend, and I had it, I had them on. And actually, Latoya Jackson was there, random. She was one of the parade uh, uh, leaders, and uh, so I, I, I snapped a quick picture of her, and she had a little entourage. She was in a golf cart, and there were all these cameras and stuff. Uh, but I generally, like, I take it out. We went to the county fair. I'll, you know, if I go for a walk, if we go down to the beach, I'll take pictures. But if I'm sitting in front of my computer, I, I don't have it on because I don't I have the nerve don't need to wear it. it in New York City. Oh, you'd get punched in the face, wouldn't you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, it's a camera, like, though, right, Gina? I mean, that sounds like, the what you just described sound like a camera. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm using it as a camera. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. here in San Diego, it's really sunny, so I always have the, I, I often wear it with the sunglass piece, which makes the camera a little less conspicuous. Like, people don't really notice it as much. I use it mostly as a camera. I use it for navigation. And uh, I do enjoy getting text messages just kind of, you know, popped up in my face without having to check my, check my phone. But that's... That's basically what I use it for. And obviously, right. I take tons of pictures of the baby and little short videos yeah. of the baby that, that grandma grandma, and grandma love. I don't know if I said this last week, but I think it's three things. Three, three, three minutes in one. It's a camera. You can record your life, number one. Number two, it gives you alerts. And number three, it gives you instructions, including directions. Yeah, two somebody uh, was walking, I think, was it Baritone or somebody walking around New York and said this is a perfect use as, as a pedestrian? Yeah, navigation as a pedestrian, definitely. And, and, yeah. and even driving, I mean, I don't, I don't recommend that you have, have the navigation on while you're driving, but there are times when I'll be in the passenger seat and have it on or I'll look up, you know, look up something beforehand uh, to get places. So the nav is great. And, and the walking nav is particularly good because it knows which way you're facing, which is very, very useful, uh, especially in I a found, dense place like New York. I found another uh, fringe benefit to having it, which is up on the rundown. 
on, on the bottom thing on glass is that what I'm now dubbing glass selfies. Because <laughs> I, I demonstrate them to other people, and, I, and then of course, they want to put them on, and what do they do? They take pictures. What are they taking ah, pictures of? Of you. Me. So I have a whole a huge... Uh, uh, That's kind of cool, uh, 28 actually. 28 pictures there of me. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> what a handsome fellow you are. Yeah. I am. I kind of like again, that. Again, again, me, again, me, me, me. Glass selfies. <laughs> this is pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard of at least two or three publications who have asked me indirectly or through friends, how do we get a hold of a pair, you know, some glass so we can send a writer out uh, to do kind of stunt, like see, you know, right. record people's reactions to it or, you know, see see how uh, how weird they look. Kind of like doing the, excuse me, but the, the, the glass, look, look at this glass hole piece, basically, uh, um, which is. Which means of, it's jumped the shark and it's over. Yeah. Time to move yeah. on. But I'm, Seriously. <laughs> a, little <bit. laughs> a little bit. It's a little sad. Says local news is doing glass stories. It's over. It's all over. Oh, no, that was, I saw, I, oh, I, I wish I put up a rundown. I don't think I did. Did I? Oh, wait, I did. 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 Uh, the NFL team? Un- no, no. Well, that. Not an onion headline. This is a real headline. Area woman exploring use of Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> and how it'll affect your weekend after this. <laughs> well, ESPN took it down to practice one of the NFL teams. I don't remember what yeah, team. Yeah, that's, that's right. actually neat. To, uh, watching them catch a ball is pretty cool. Area yeah, watching them woman. catch a ball is pretty cool. Yeah. South oh, Bend so Tribune. Cool. <laughs> Area woman has glass. <laughs> We have a whole glass section on our rundown here. We have a huge section. We have, we have uh, the NFL players uh, with glass. We have um, Larry Page wearing it at a wedding. Oh, don't let somebody. Is it his wedding? No. No. It was he a, was a groomsman. No. Wedding. Okay. Yes. Um, so what's the story? Do, do we Are we going to see a bunch of pictures on his uh, Google Plus of his brother's wedding? We should. You see him doing the more subtle. We don't see Larry Page going, okay, glass. We see him doing that. Always right. wearing now. Apparently, Google has patented glass, uh, a way of making melding glass with prescription uh, lenses, which is good news for people like me. Most oh, of these are farts. pictures of Larry's attractive wife. Uh, it seems. Oh yeah, she is attractive. Yeah. Um, where is the story? I don't know what her. Where are the pictures? <laughs> what? All... Right, the pictures that he took. Yeah. I don't know if he yeah, he actually shared them. them. Yeah. God, I don't know. I guess I, I would well, if it were my wedding, I would welcome somebody wearing glass because he's documenting the wedding, right? Mm -hmm. We gave, uh, when I got married 20 years ago, we gave uh, instant, you know, this is how long ago it was, in, you know, disposable instamatics yeah. to everybody. Uh, they were at every table. So take pictures and then leave them on the table and we'll get them developed. This is kind of like that. Yeah. It was in Croatia. Nice place I hear. Yes. Nice beaches and things. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, NFL glass. That one's pretty cool, though. So are these um, people who uh, lent their glass to players? Yeah, or a reporter, ESPN reporter put them on the players. Oh, he had it. Okay. She put them on. She. Uh, yeah, so they had them on ooh, the Ooh, that's kind of cool. Now, I bet I'm thinking she had to start the uh, recording oh, yeah. for him. No, yeah, so he's about to throw the ball. Wow, there. that's cool. That's I cool. guess. Wait until he catches. The catching is even better. We, you know, you see this stuff on. on there we uh, go. On, Boom. Try. Here's that play. So you see this stuff on uh, NFL coverage anyway because they have helmet cams and stuff. In fact, it's yeah, and that, that's what the coach was saying. You know, you really could see the helmet, every helmet being equipped with this kind yeah. of thing, and 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 for viewers to be able to watch the game from any player's right. given perspective. Right. I don't know if I'd want that though. It's a little like. <laughs> little Blair Witch. Well, you know, because when the networks use it, it's a little, it's a special thing. You see it all the time in race cars. They'll have special, you know, cameras right. in their race cars. The so first person is there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. New. Turning left. I'm turning left now. I'm going to turn left some more. There's nothing new to the idea of first person. No, no, not at all. Last just maybe makes it easier. Um, easy enough for an NFL player to use. Uh, <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so Jeff uh, demoed a glass at the Guardian Activate. That's where some of those pictures came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, that was where you interviewed uh, Vince Cerf. Vint, the wonderful Vint. They just put the video up this morning. Yay. Um, I want to watch it. Vint is amazing. Um, 
Yeah, we talked about the fact that you did it yesterday or did last, it last week. Time, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so uh, yeah, yesterday. Gosh, we should just pl not do the show and well, play no, the interview. Twenty minutes. Yeah, it's twenty minutes. Yeah. That's the demo one. Okay, highlights. Anything? You're not wearing glass during the interview. No. Wait a minute. I have audio from. Big deal. Okay. Wait a minute. Where is that? Oh, that's you. Okay. Oh, so you're using the screencasting. Nice. Okay, now, by the way, yeah. they, and you what said they very kindly edited out the... It took me like 20 times because the way the way to turn the screencast on is you've got to photograph the barcode on the phone with the glass. Yeah. Oh, God. And, yeah. and trying to get it in the right spot is nearly impossible because you can't preview the photo. And so I was on stage. They fuck. <laughs> so it's a good first impression when they put a yeah, gopro they, quality camera on this thing then maybe i'll be impressed yeah, yeah. but then i then I, then in my feed it takes a while for the photos to come up so then three days later i'll see 20 pictures of <laughs> half a qr code <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny here's uh here's something uh mr robert scoble uh, uh shot with glass uh, about a, about a week ago Look at that smiling face. And I think I know who that is in the background here. That affable gentleman. This is uh, Daria Musk, the uh, wonderful performer who uh, made her name on Google Plus by doing a 24-hour a, a broadcast and singing. She was she sang a couple of songs for us at a uh, mystery event. And then there's a mystery guy holding a mystery device. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you would say it's a phone or confirm that it's a I, phone. Even I can't like a phone. confirm. I, I, can, I think I can tell you that that is, in fact, uh, Rick Rick Osterloh, who is Senior Vice President for Product Management at Motorola. And in fact, uh, Rick's a great guy. I had a great time talking to him. He's the guy who created Moto Blur. He created the first Motorola Android phone, which was the Click. It was kind of a social media phone. I don't know if you remember that. Um, he's he he left Motorola and then came back. Don't know why he was there. Don't know what that is he's holding. <laughs> By the way, there's Mike Elgin, Ben like Parr. A really small cable box, Leo. That's really <laughs> that's amazing. what it was. <laughs> we were looking at the new Motorola desktop. You you figured it out, uh, Laura Fitton. A lot of bloggers uh, at the event. Um, and if I scroll a little farther, there's a uh, guy Kawasaki. How was the food? Food was very nice. The event was very fun. Was it just like a barbecue? You guys look well, this was the, uh, there were several parsh, ports, portions to the event. I think I could say that. I should explain for those who don't know. I, I foolishly signed a non-disclosure agreement. So while I was at this event, and, and I can't deny it because there's, <laughs> Robert Scoble took video and posted it of me there. I can't talk about what the event was, uh, 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 what I saw at the event. Uh, but I can do this. I realized they didn't NDA the give the gift bag that we're all. You can see in the video, we've all got these blue bags. Mom swag. Mm. That got you me really real excited to... until I saw what was in it. <laughs> a lot uh, of rainbow M's. A copy of Guy Kawasaki's book, Ape: How to Publish a Book. A copy of this book, which is interesting, by uh, maybe you know this uh, book, Jeff. Influence: The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert B. Uh, Cialdini. Um, I've seen it on the stands. Yeah. As far as my... I'll read it. It looks really interesting. It's, a cla it's called A Classic Book on Persuasion, The Psychology of Why People Say Yes to NDAs. Oh, well, that's why they... <laughs> <laughs> that's why they gave it out. Uh, oh, well, this is interesting. What is... Oh, no. Uh, this is a Bo uh, Motorola battery pack. I think this was the product we were there to see, actually. And then a pair of <laughs> headphones. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, I, I want to grill you, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to grill so, you. I want to um, ask, ask all every question that I can. Yes. I want to, but you know what? I won't do that to you. I can can you can you imagine that as much as you want to ask, I want to answer. You want to tell. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. Well, there's been so many leaks, though. There's photos of Eric Schmidt using the phone. There's galleries. It's, it's kind of, of the worst kept secret, and and in fact, I think that at this point, there's really not much that I could add. Hey, Gina, <laughs> frankly, yeah. let's okay. Get, uh, All right. Ah, let's get Leo sued. Huh? What can we do to get Leo sued? No, oh, thanks. No, I'm not going to say anything. They were very specific. They said you may see leaks. You cannot confirm anything you see. 
uh, until the uh, embargo is lifted. And I think even if I were to tell you the date of the embargo being lifted, it would be uh, a giveaway of some information as well. However, I, I think that Jeff said I could say this. I, I was actually very excited about what I did see. And uh, I think for reasons that will become clear, it's a significant uh, thing. Okay. A All very right. significant thing. Wow. Hmm. You're gonna, so I'm going to regret my one, aren't I? That's what you're saying. I'm going to regret this. That's what he said before. Yeah, well, given your preferences and phones and so forth, I'm not saying it's a phone, but uh, given, <laughs> what, <laughs> given what I know about you, um, yes. It's a non-trivial thing. Okay. All right, so can, can we talk about the leaks, or do you not want to talk about the no, leaks? No, we can talk about the leaks. All I can, I can't leaks. do is say yes or no. Okay, but uh, there okay. were quite a few leaks, and most of them were, are fairly credible, I have to say, especially that Rogers video. Yeah, that Rogers video was pretty. So it sounds like sensors are always on listening, and it sounds like battery life. Although it's, it, you would think that those two things would 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 go again. I mean, the, it, the well, phone always well, listening for the hot word, the OK Google Now, uh, seems like the kind of thing that would kill your battery. Doing that? It, one leak said there were two different processors doing that, and that's how that uh, limited. One one was just assigned to listen, and we certainly know the notion of listening. We can certainly see patterns of that in number one, obviously, OK Glass, and number two, we saw stuff at I/O that was pretty amazing. That you're going to be able to say to your laptop uh, machine, OK Google, search for Gina Japani, and mm -hmm. we know that they've worked on that, and they had demos of that with phones. So right. so we know that's in the pipeline. Right, and that's how glass, right, glass works as well. Yeah, and I think that this is really interesting because, uh, and we talked a little bit about this on Twit, if, if you live in a world where your devices are listening all the time, um, do you get, are you, does that feel uh, intrusive? You know? Yes. Um, I'm, I feel a little weird by, weirded out by that. People talked about with the Xbox One, the fact that that Kinect camera is always listening and is always on. As, you know, this very Orwellian device in your house. Yeah, but Leo, I, mean, I already saw, I already put up a, 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 some some post on Google Plus, and, you know, the fifth comment down was exactly that. It's predictable. We're going to see news stories about this. But but when we asked about that, and, and, and we asked about that on the, from the, somebody asked on the floor at, at, at uh, I.O., it only listens locally. It only turns it on. It only wakes it up. That's all it does, and it's local. It is not something that goes over the network. Right. It's listening for a particular word when it hears that. And by the way, I don't know the, how, how whatever this thing is will work, but that's this is the Rogers video. Uh, but that's what I think people are saying is, and that's certainly how the Google uh, uh, Chrome was working. It's not it's not sending everything. Well, you have to trust Google when they say this. It's well, not right. sending everything back. That would be a lot of data, though. It would be. It's just well, listening for a word. And the phone has enough or the computer has enough capability to say, hey, I'm not going to do anything until I hear that word. But when I hear that word, I'm going to say hello. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, we hear post NSA that they can listen to you even with your phone turned off. <laughs> they can listen to you all the time. And these days, I don't know what to think is paranoid. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen uh, phones, uh, I think they were more intended for husbands to plant on their wayward wives or vice versa but the phones that had microphones you could turn on cameras you could turn on without right. anybody's knowledge so it but now that's a specific piece of hardware that's designed to do that right if the phrase is okay google now that's a little obnoxious yeah and i would i would hope that you could customize it but i don't know that, I, that I was would thinking be about nice. this today. my jersey version of course is yo yo google yeah, that'd be great. Can you do that with yeah. the, the gla glass? You can't do that, right? No, no, you can't. No, you, you have can't. to say, OK, okay Google Glass. OK, Glass. OK, course, Glass. We had the story on the rundown about how the word is was 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 raised and the woman who did it. Very, It's very it's funny because it's so Google. Uh, she said that, you know, I, at Google, you've got to present like 10 options. But the problem was the first idea I had was the best idea I had. Yeah. I didn't think of any other options. <laughs> what about okay, bacon? Google? What about go, go gadget? Somebody said in the chat room. <laughs> uh, go, go glass. <laughs> Glassicus. Pew, pew, pew. That's good. No, it's not. Um, I think it'd be nice if you could customize this. One thing that is an issue with glass, I, I'll say this cryptically. There is one thing that's an issue with glass that is not an issue with this device. That doesn't help at all, does it? 
Oh, let me let me let me guess it. Let me say it. Let me say it. Before I say it. I'm going to guess that it can wreck it. The problem with glass is that even if I'm standing five feet away and someone else is wearing it, if I say the phrase "Okay, glass," glass listens. And I'm going to guess they found a way to fix that. That that Rogers video, there was a bit about it learns your voice. Big bingo. Boy, that would so, be great if they could do attorneys, that. Attorneys, Leo said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they, nothing. They definitely said that. So that, that to me meant, but actually, yes, Leo, it knows my voice. Actually, I'm afraid you might have signed that NDA on behalf of the entire Twit network. No, 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 no. Okay. You guys can do anything you want. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, you I, could, that was you just could, based on the Rogers video. That was, yeah. you know. That would, yeah. be a, that would be a nice thing because I actually have seen that happen. Uh, <laughs> oh, that happens all the time. With yeah, me. I could, you know, if you say, okay, glass, I could say, take a picture. And <laughs> it takes a picture. Well, yeah. I'm trying to tell people how to do it. And so well, I, I have to whisper to them. So now it's, what does it say there? Right. Say that. Right. And then what do you That's do? so frustrating. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if it does know your voice, there's other things you can do, like unlock, you know, when you hear my voice, that, that kind of thing. Right. I mean, not the best security in the world, of course, and we know the issues with face unlock. But, uh, but it seems like that knowing your voice is useful in a few different well, ways. Yeah, you're going to be able to do I mean, I, I, I heard today some, some reference to be able to go to stores and buy things with your face. I could say this. There are features of this phone that no one has re revealed yet. Oh. That's exciting. Yeah, I oh Leo, you're killing me because there's obviously there's obviously a, a big thing here, and I'm not really not sure if we've hit it in the leaks. And oh god, okay, I won't. This is killing me a little bit. <laughs> so the voice activation we know about. What else? What else do we know? Uh, it's supposed to be customizable. The back plate Though and the front Rogers plate. Rogers said only black or white. Yeah, Others right. Black plate in August. That's colors. the. The leaks at August, so we don't have to wait that long. That's uh, for some Rogers, of the so I'm hoping to make it even sooner. Cool. Camera looks good. Shutter. How long do you have oh. to return the HTC One? Oh, that's a good question. I should look that up. <laughs> I may look that up right now. I'm looking at my Play Store email. Oh, we do know that no, there I... is a Motorola event, but I think it's a Droid event on the 24th. Right. Yeah. I that's think it's next. A, that's it's next week. It, it Gina, really. I have. My old uh, Galaxy Nexus, I can send to you until you get another phone. <laughs> oh. oh, I love my one. It's, I love my one, too. You know, it's Here's funny. I go fear. back and forth with the Galaxy S4 and the one. Um, Here's my fear, my big fear. Yeah. And, if I, and after I say this, Leo, I'm going to count down from 10. And if you leave your chair before I finish. <laughs> No, no, um, I can't do anything. They're watching me like hawks. I got to tell you. Here's, here's my fear. My fear is that this this time they're going to suck up to the carriers and not release a pure Google Experience phone and uh, uh, unlocked, et, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to have to buy them through the carrier. Because when Rogers said it was exclusive in Canada to Rogers, now we've heard reports it's going to be more than one carrier in the U.S. I hope to heck I can just buy it on the Play Store. Well, all I would say is, and I would say this whether I knew something or not. All I could say is, this is the this I really am pretty sure is the is the f everything up to now for Motorola has been in the was in the pipeline before Google's acquisition. This is the first phone after Google that they've released after Google really got in there and said this is what we're going to do. Right. And I would expect to see, and from what the what the what you've seen in the leaks, I think kind of confirm this. I would expect to see a lot of influence from Google on what Motorola does here. I, I agree with all of that. My fear is the business model. When we have seen Google misstep, Google's misstep twice, as far as I'm concerned, big ways, right? The, the devil's deal with Verizon and going into China. And why does Google do that? Google does that because they want to make nice with some partner, whether that's the Chinese government or Verizon. And that's what always gets them in trouble. When Google does what Google wants to do, it does the right thing so far, as a rule. Or maybe the third possibility, of course, is the NSA. Um, but we'll know more about that later, right? So so if there are moments that come along when Google makes nice with right. phone companies, for example. Right. I think uh, only because they've had to. Use. You know, Apple yes. was the first one to really have the clout uh, to say to a phone company, no, we're going to do it this way. For instance, the iPhone, one of the reasons I think people love the iPhone is there's, so, there's little or no crapware on it. It is a right. pure yeah. phone no matter who you get it from. Um, yeah. And it's one of the reasons, I was just reading an article today about 
you cannot legitimately buy an iPhone in Russia because the major Russia, the three, four major Russian carriers who dominate the market are just don't like Apple's uh, um, egregious requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they just said, well, we're not going to sell it. Uh, and uh, there's a big black or gray market in iPhones, apparently, but nobody's selling it directly in Russia. And I think that if they could have, if the, if the iPhone hadn't been as successful as it was, I, I think you would have seen a very different experience. But Apple really put the screws to these guys. The question is, uh, why hasn't Google? Does Google have something? Is it possible Google has something that gives them enough clout that they could do that? Yeah. I think the at this point, Android, it's very clear Android is a platform at least half of your customers want, if not more. Right. Well, and 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 the the T-Mobile model we talked about last week, and since then the the AT&T model, which lets you upgrade sooner than two years, though uh, I think The Verge said stay away from the AT&T model, but whatever. I wonder whether those are maybe perhaps in response to what they expect from Google. I also think it's interesting that Google's done these two Google Experience phones. I think to some degree that this HTC One and Galaxy S4 were ways of saying to the their partners. Look, yeah, we own a we own a phone company, and we're and we're about to come out with a phone, um, but really we love you guys too. See, you're in our store too, which yeah. tells me you don't do that. I would guess unless you're about to come out with something big, and you plan to sell it as well. Well, but then the next problem is so that seems to me my, my 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 strategic thinking would be okay. If if you're Google, well, we want to sell this store in our we want to sell this phone in our store. If we do that though. If we make it, let's say, a Nexus, uh, this is going to, now this is our company. You know, we've the previous Nexuses were what, LG um, and uh, HTC. HTC. Samsung. Mm -hmm. And Samsung. So if we now suddenly say, what Google doesn't want to do is tell those guys who are very successfully selling Android phones, oh, we'll take it from here. So to me, the, that would explain why all of a sudden you saw the HTC One and Galaxy okay, S4 Google Okay, the next nightmare phones. scenario is they put it up there uh, next to those two phones, and those two phones are selling for 600 bucks. And meanwhile, the Nexus 4 sold for 200 Hmm. I'm sorry, I was oh. distracted. Did you say something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. God, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Leo has news to patients. I would really not be... Uh... Like, I, I'd be a terrible corporate executive. I am a terrible corporate executive. Come <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have Lisa. <laughs> she, you know, she is great at secrecy. She can, she, you know, but the problem is I know it, and so I say it. She signed the NDA. She's got no problem. She was with me. She saw the whole thing. She <laughs> saw the whole thing. <laughs> and I have to say, she did do, uh, she did a great job of negotiating some stuff. Really? Hmm. Won't say what that is either. Uh, ketchup? <laughs> yeah, we got great deal on ketchup. Photo X is for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love you, Lisa. I'm a terrible <laughs> poker player, too. Oh, here she comes. Oh, Lisa's got the goods. I'm starting to sweat now. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I just want to make sure you're not saying anything you shouldn't say. Well, I went through the bag already. No, he's been good. Tell Lisa oh, I say that you've been good. Jeff is a journalism professor. I'm using him as my guide as to what I can and cannot do. Did you did you save that thing we signed? Did you get a copy of it? I didn't. No, it's in Dr. Speed. No, no, I'm, but I mean, I think we should have a copy of it so we know what we signed. I forgot I forgot to ask for one. Anyway. Well, I don't need a copy. It was an NDA thing. We wouldn't yeah, we won't talk about it. That's what we said. <laughs> She's going back into her so, office. Something now. tells me we're changing the subject now. <laughs> Yeah, we we let's change this up because this is killing me too. I'm I'm just I, <laughs> I want to just start yelling out things, but I, let's just yeah. So okay. so the 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 rumors are that, and this is another interesting one. And by the way, I do not know anything germane on this one. That Google was is going to spend half a billion dollars on marketing of the Moto X phone, and I have no idea about that. But what's interesting is that's that's more than Apple spends marketing the iPhone. Half a billion dollars you want something that's going to make the other manufacturers nervous that's going to make them nervous. that's going to make them crazy yeah. on the other hand that may be for verizon sprint at&t and the carriers oh, right co-op deals co-op that's basically 
if you said, I'm going to give $100 million to each of them, and then I'll have $100 million for ads, that might make sense. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, it's worldwide, too. It's worldwide. It, this, yeah, actually, that half billion is not just in the U.S., it well, includes curious, Europe. It's, it's, been, it's been announced that they're going to they're going to manufacture a phone this phone in the U.S. That's that's not even a leak. They have said that. Yes. Is it allowed? And that the, the, the thesis on that is that will allow them to customize it. You know, if, and and this is something Apple isn't really able to do. Apple, in order to make the vast number of phones they have to make, has to make it in China. Uh, well, here's, and but here's my concern. There, I'm just being worry wart today. My concern there is. We're going to be hitting the button and get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. We're going to have to wait for months before we can order the darn phone. You know, are they going to have sufficient stock and capacity? And I'm sure you didn't discuss that at uh, the lunch that didn't happen. I might have. That worries me. I might have um. talked about that. <laughs> 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 this, is like, this is like how to torture you know for me you want to torture me drop me on a bridge right yeah for other people you want to torture them you know have them with rats yeah for leo tell them something he can't repeat yeah torture i wish i could i mean they've th there's been a lot said and there's and i i think the most important thing is there's more to say that's that's the one thing i think it's fair to say there is more to say. We, you know, for all that's been leaked, and there's been a lot leaked. So, Gina, what's the return policy? <sighs> yeah, I'm going to have to send this back. I mean, if Leo, I'm going to have to send this thing back, aren't I? Not yet. Damn. Not yet. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Right. Well, it could be 14 right. days or 30. It's either 14 days or 30 days. Yeah, that's what I got. I got to find out. I'm, I'm still. I'm. Does the I'm chat room? Does anybody that. know what the chat return room, uh, policy is on the uh, Google uh, Thirty days on the Play Store. White House seventy five said. 30 you got days. plenty of time. Days. I don't trust the you White got House. Plenty of time. Okay. 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 All right. So August, early August, we're gonna know. I'm just that saying. You don't have to just saying. Don't <laughs> worry. You got time to return right. your somebody phone. Somebody else said fourteen days. Oh no! Wait a minute. Wait. I'm looking. <sighs> 15% restocking fee, says Web 96. 15 days would be problematic. Okay. <laughs> oh, now we're really. Check order status. <laughs> hey, by the way, did you see that? Um, so T-Mobile had this, you know, plan that it, every six months new phone. We talked about it last week. AT&T yep. and Sprint are doing the same thing, although some have said that it's a really crappy deal if you do the AT&T the Verge, deal. The Verge has a rundown on the, on the, on the AT&T. It's, yeah, it's, it's financially a bad idea, but I bet you people do it just because they want some excuse to get a new phone every six months. This is the jump. I find it better just to buy the darn phone uh, open and then, and, then, and then add it. What? So now Google is having an event in one week on July 24th in the morning. Sundar Pichai... Will be there now. This, unfortunately, used to be if it were Sundar, you'd say, "Oh, it's Chrome." Yeah, but not not, not now, anymore. Now he's Android and Chrome. So you don't know which. Damn it! Um, so we don't know what that will be about. Uh, I four point three sounds sounds like it might be. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we we haven't heard much about that. Although I'm getting the feeling at this point that there's even four point three Android is not going to be a big change. Do you get that feeling? Yeah, yeah. No, it isn't. It isn't. All we know about it is that there's going to be some camera UI changes, but the fact that it's a, a minor release, I don't think it'll be. Well, let, let me ask a couple questions about that. So, so if always on listening is just part of the OS, is that potential, or, oh. or do we think that that has to be built in to the hardware? I mean, we, we know what the impact on, on, on battery is going to be, but who knows what was built into this hardware before? That's one question. Second is you have the, the phone stuff. The, the Rogers video showed some really neat camera stuff where you didn't have to hit a button. You could just hit the screen. You could do other things. That, I presume, is just OS changes. So we could see some of the things that were shown in that video that Leo can't confirm. Yeah. What of those things could be in the next version of the OS? What of those things couldn't could be. be because they're hardware dependent? We should right. also say that it might not be. The other thing he could be announcing is new tablets. It's, oh, they're overdue for a Nexus 7 replacement, they right? They sure are. That's true. Uh, the other thing he could be uh, announcing is, um, I don't know what. This is the 24th. Chromebooks, is, new Chromebooks. Is, could it, could there be an update to Chrome OS? Well, they are, they constantly updated. Yeah, it's constantly updated. No, but I right? mean, like some big thing, like oh, like like they're releasing. A we new, did a deal a with Dell or something. I don't know. Well, they they yeah. could be doing the OK Google voice thing for machines. I'd love they to see a, a mid pre a four hundred dollar. 
Chromebook yes. that was like well, a... the HP one is out. The HP has a 14 inch screen. Oh, all right. And um, 16 gigs, four, four gigs memory was supposed to two, which is really good. 16 gig solid state drive. I went into Best Buy and looked at it. It's still, pardon me, it's still HP. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. Trackpad is that is that weird bumpy thing. And I use. <laughs> I mentioned on Twitter that my Chromebook Pixel. Uh, is my breakfast computer. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's on the table, and I, I it's the only time I use it is breakfast, sometimes a little bit uh, watching TV, because it isn't really a full computer. It's a browser. It's a browsing computer. Um, but I do think for students that it's not a bad idea. Um, and this I'm is a, a breakfast event, life, apparently. Yeah. You're going to be breakfasting it's a breakfast with event. Sundar. So well, I'm thinking go. maybe Sundar heard me. <laughs> I'll, bring my, I'll bring my Pixel. Are you going? You recover? How are we recovering? invited. Oh. Just because I know Guy Kawasaki apparently does not get me into other events. Mm. <laughs> oh, and there will be a live stream, it looks like. Yeah. So we probably stream? should cover that. Uh, you know, the, the 24th is the second anniversary of our moving into our new studio, so we're going to be having a party. Wow. Wow. Time flies. I know. And, um, and this, I never this did is good find timing. It's right before the, before the show. Yeah. So I guess we probably will. I hadn't really this uh, this invitation went out this morning, but I think that that's probably what we'll do. I'm just checking to see if I have any email from Sundar, but I don't see anything. So, Jason, did you get an invitation to the Google event on Wednesday? Did anybody here get an invit? Did you get an invitation to the Google event on Wednesday? No. So is that before the, that's breakfast? So we'll know what it is by the time our show's on. Yay! Yeah, yeah. yeah that's perfect. It's good timing because yeah. we'll be able to discuss. So any bets? I, I, I'm going to bet a Nexus 7 or something like that. Somebody said in the chat room there's a rumor that it'll be a 299 versus 199. I, mean, I, I keep on picking up the Note 8 because I would like to have the, 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 the pen, but it's just that, that extra inch is just too much. Even for, also, even for our, what we found with our reviewers uh, is that in order to get it to be uh, work with a stylus, you have to put this Wacom layer on top of it that really? reduces the quality of the screen. Oh. That's what you said, Jason, right? You didn't like the notes as screen as much, and we think it's because it had to do that. It had to do with the stylus. Yeah. Wacom or Wacom? I don't care. I like Wacom. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said that, and I was like, oh, what now? You know, Wacom, <laughs> Wacom, whatever. I like Wacom. <laughs> Wacom. I just say because I like to say Wacom. <laughs> so if we think Moto X is August, then we think that this event next week is, yeah, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a new Nexus 7 or a new Chromebook. Or maybe the, both. This, this, uh, this seems this seems like a pretty low key. Join us for breakfast with Sundar. It seems kind of maybe like uh, just a little. Could just be breakfast. Yeah, it could be an yeah. update to uh, I don't know. He does what? He does Android and Chrome. That's it. Right? Android and Chrome. It could be Android four four two three. Uh, yeah, it could be the new Nexus seven. Yeah. It could really could be either or both. Although I don't see them announcing anything about Chrome that isn't a new Chromebook, right? Because right. Chrome constantly updates. And we've just seen a bunch of Chrome stuff in preview at I.O., right? Right. I don't know. So uh, to get back to the uh, jump plan, uh, Eric Ravenscraft writing on Lifehacker did a breakdown of the T-Mobile, the AT&T frequent upgrader plan. Um, you know, it's so hard to figure this out. Um, it is. Uh, across the board, he says, you will pay more both over the short term and the long term. Uh, of course, you don't get to keep a device you don't finish paying off. It's, these are trade-ins. And it doesn't mean, and it, one of the things it does mean is you, if you owe anything on the phone, you're stuck with the carrier um, unless you pay off the phone. The th other thing he says is that AT&T Next is a huge ripoff. <laughs> yeah. So they did an a infographic. So with an AT&T two-year contract based on $90 a month for service and $200 up front for the phone, your cost of your phone is $2,360. Uh, with you with next it goes up to two thousand eight hundred dollars and you don't you don't uh, I guess you get the same uh, ability to keep it um, 
That's with no upgrade. With that's so. In other words, if you do the same thing, you keep the phone for two years, it still costs you four hundred forty dollars more. Five hundred forty four hundred forty dollars more over the two years. If you do one upgrade, it goes up to two thousand nine hundred twenty eight dollars, and your monthly cost goes up to one hundred twenty two dollars. So really, it, don't do it. You, you're better off just to buy it. Just to buy it. If you do the AT and T next. Two years, you do one upgrade with a buyout. Your monthly cost goes up to $122 from $90. Your total cost is $3,184. <laughs> and you get to keep one one-year-old phone. <laughs> Does it have comparables for the T-Mobile? Uh, I think the T-Mobile is, is not as uh, bad. But it says T-Mobile's jump plans are better, but frequent upgrades are still costly. So... Yeah, you're really better off buying the I phone. I think you're, you're better off to buy a phone and then sell it either on eBay or yeah. through... Um, yeah. Gazelle. Yeah. Gazelle, yeah. Gazelle makes this pretty straightforward. Yeah, and that's gonna be, you're going to be better off. And you're more control. So let's see what your HTC One is worth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. No, no. You know what? I love the One, and I, 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 am, I have not... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm gonna. Well, you're gonna buy everything. You you buy everything, so you can. You can yeah. Choose. It's not. It's the, there's never an or for you. It's always an and for you. Yeah. See, the they don't have the Google edition as an option, but I'll choose factory unlocked. Yeah. Thirty-two gigs. Uh. Yeah, you got the thirty-two, yes. or the six. There is no sixteen. Thirty-two or sixty-four. Two hundred forty-four bucks. That's not real great. That's not great. <laughs> it's like That's half really what you paid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I can always give this to one of my developers. But I do love this phone. No, you're so going to love it. What do you like best about it? See, you're not getting the thing I like best, which is the Zoe's and the I, highlights. You know, it's such a big upgrade from the Galaxy Nexus. It's really fast. The screen is, is longer, even though the handset is the same size. Like on, in my app, you can see a whole other to-do item at the bottom of the screen. I love that the speakers are on the front. I listen to podcasts. I yes. Watch Isn't that live. brilliant? Yes. yes. I like that I could put the phone down on its back on the table, see the screen, and hear the speakers yes. at the same time. That's yes. a very simple thing, but it's a very nice thing. I agree. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's, it, I mean, the screen looks amazing next to the Galaxy Nexus. It's just a big upgrade for me. Like, I know, I know, Leo, you have all the best phones. You have the GS4 there. I go so back and forth with the GS4 it. and the One. I like the One. The, the non-removable battery can, what's your battery life been? It's been it's been really quite good so far. It's been it hasn't uh, crapped out on me midday, uh, which is basically my requirement. Just make it through the day with me, and, and it hasn't been an issue as long as yeah. I plug it in at night. It's 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 good. been fine. Well, then that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah hopefully it'll stay that way. <laughs> I don't know enough about what's what the Moto X is to know whether that's uh, going to be a good upgrade or not. Now he now he now he equivocates. Hmm. Hmm. But you'll find out soon enough. I'll admit, though, the always listening thing, I know Jeff is going to yell at me. I, I don't love that idea. And, like, I get that it's local. I just, you do have to trust Google about that. And also, which I kind of do, but also I think, like, do consumers really conceptually differentiate between what happens locally on the phone and what gets sent back over well, the wire? Well, this is why people like you who are very smart about technology need to explain right. this to them. Right, right. Actually, I, I think... Um, well, remember HAL 9000 in 2001, A Space Odyssey? The, the, the goal of a computer that responds and interacts with you, it would have to listen, just like your yeah. friend listens. Um, so to have a truly interactive computer that does what you want it to do, it has to do a lot of the things Google's building in, like know ahead of time what you want. You know, I mean, the perfect servant's one that knows you want a cup of tea before you even ask for it and has it ready the minute you want it. Um, I think that's what Google's trying to do. And yeah, I, I think absolutely. that's what people, truthfully, I think that people don't care as much about privacy as we say they do, as we do. Uh, and I think right. that if it's super convenient and super cool, they'll, they're they not even going to think twice. Basically, never say anything out loud to your phone that you wouldn't want the NSA to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just, I don't think that swiping my finger up on my phone to have it start listening is that... Is that? Nice. Yeah, and that's I what I try to, Gina's yeah. trying to convince herself she doesn't want that feature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, when no, we hooked up the Connect okay. in our living room, we hooked up the Connect. You know, my wife was like, is this thing going to be like, 
t- taking pictures of us the whole time that we're, right. we're, we're, we're like watching TV and right. you know living our lives. Can like, you oh, imagine? No, why not. would it? What what is more boring? Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. We are pretty boring. What do they want TV with TV. pictures of you watching TV? Right. Who but cares? There's still this sense of like there is the sense of surveillance and it is the sense of like of, of watching to see you know have I done the, the the connect hand wave which that doesn't that it doesn't actually look for the hand wave until you go into right. you have the Xbox you have to actually on be running in it. a yeah. connect enabled game. Yeah, you so, turn it on. Yeah. Right, you turn it on. Right. And you can see it come on and scan right. the room. And right. there's something comforting about that. Okay, now the connect is on and I'm going to play with I know I'm being super paranoid. No, the new one doesn't on. do that though. The new one's always watching. Oh, the new, new ones just always kind of and always like listening. That. I think, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I th- probably folks will just get people just get kind of used to this. And you're right, sending that all that data over the line. I know, I know, uh, logically that that would make no sense. Um, and then it is the most boring. Nobody thing cares that much. No one cares that much. But you know what? What it, the no, NSA if, wants to wants to you know Microsoft well, if, to to broadcast all the streams from the Connect devices in everybody's living room. Like no, they wouldn't they do that. Say? What they would do is they would say, okay, we you know we think Gina Trapani's been uh, doing something illegal. Let's turn that one on. Let's tap that. Let's tap that one. Yeah, then exactly. they would be interested in what you're doing, and some poor schmuck would have to sit and watch you watch TV. And reports have it that they can do that anyway. They can do that anyway. Yes. Right, but I'm, in, I'm helping them. I'm like, I'm equipping my home with surveillance devices. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Notice. Right? Like I'm, how easy that is. Yeah. Yeah. And so if I buy tea from a suspected terrorist because they're doing two, three hops now, uh, I, you know. I, yeah. I, I you actually don't have to buy tea from a suspected terrorist. You have to buy tea from somebody who bought tea from somebody who bought tea from a suspected yes. terrorist. Right. So that's right. pretty much all of us. <laughs> Right. But 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 uh, you know I think it's safe to assume that you're you know I use encryption so my stuff's being collected. It's just safe to assume your stuff's being collected, whether they're looking at it or or. I mean, it's it's the same rule. Is you, you never say anything in email that you wouldn't want to appear on the front page of the New York Times. Um, you know, hello or. Well, now you or, can't or say or anything around your phone email. or your Connect. <laughs> that gets a little bit uh, restrictive. Yeah, I mean. Do we have to thing. get a cone of silence in the house? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, this is my home. I'm having conversations with my family. Like, it, it, you know, it, it's a little different. I'm typing email to to friends and colleagues. And, yes, I type personal things in emails to friends and, and to my spouse. Uh, but there's something about doing that data entry and, and feeling like, oh, this is a document that I am now sending you know, off to the Internet. Glass. Glass is listening to you. It is. Well, no, right, because you have to, you have to tap it to wake it up. Oh. Okay. Right? Oh. Oh. Maybe that tap is just <laughs> for your just, convenience. Just, you think that's yeah, just, yeah. Just, to take a look just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Uh, Gina and I were having a conversation before we got on, on, on the air. Um, uh, I have a reason to encrypt email. Uh, and so I, I've never done it, don't know. And I, she was great. She gave me a wonderful plugin for Chrome called Mailvelope. Easy enough for Jarvis. That's 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 the standard here, right? So I put it in, but but it still presumes essential knowledge about how to encrypt. And I still don't didn't get the the basic. What do you do then? Then then. So I wrote up this post. Well, I should also plus. point out that Mailvelope has been hacked. But other than that, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. How has it been hacked? It's still. When um, when was Mailvelope hacked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they've patched it. It uses a uh, strong encryption. It uses Open PGP, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and as long as you do it that's outside good. of the client, I think it's hard to do. It. Oh, uh, yeah. If you do it outside the client, you're fine. Yeah, that's what you're doing. It, it, it encourages you to write the email and encrypt it, it outside. Yeah, the then there's email. then it's not hacked. And then cut yeah. and paste it in. Okay, right. I don't think. Well, I could. I still couldn't figure out what. So I wrote up this post. I was all wrong. I was completely wrong. But nobody just said uh, simply, "Oh no, Jarvis, it's one, two, three, four, five. No, this huge debate about is PGP good enough? What are you doing this? What are you doing that? It's the, the religion of the encryption church is obnoxious. It is obnoxious, and it turns everybody off to try to use this stuff because it's overcomplicated. It's over argued about. It just drove me." Batty. And finally, finally, you'll be glad to know, Leo, somebody put in a link to, what's the name of the how-to show you did? Um, oh, yeah, Know How, yeah. Know How. We and talked so, about uh, Open starting PGP. Starting at minute 11 in the encryption yeah. show on Know How, yeah. boom, made it easy, figured it out. But my God, I had to go through three days of torture of encryption people yelling at each other around me. Twit.tv slash KH50 if you want to 
It's uh, very watch good. That minute episode. eleven, if you now trust using Mailvelope, yeah. is exactly where you learn how to use Mailvelope. Yeah. They use uh, the, the title is a little deceptive because there is PGP, which is a uh, commercial product. They actually use Open PGP via GNU P, GNU Privacy Guard, which is uh, what I recommend, and it's a very good way to do it. But geez, it's it, you're, you're right, Leo. When you've said before, you and they demonstrate Mailvelope, which would do it. right, yeah. The but, problem with Mailvelope is somebody would have to have access to your computer, which you know we're presuming that you haven't given physical access to your computer to somebody. Right. It's open source, and it was just updated five days ago. I imagine yeah. this no, it's is getting fine. patched pretty, yeah. pretty and it's very often. easy. I, yeah. I think it's good. But, but man, because I thought, I, I, here's, here's how screwy I was, trying to understand just the concept of how uh, open key works. I've, never, I've always just let it wash over my head. So I thought I had to s somehow get the password I was using to the person I was sending the email to. <laughs> no. No, that's, right? that's a reasonable thing. Yeah. That's a reasonable again, thing, I, I but that's what, that's, concept. yeah. That, I thought that I was encrypting it with my key, and then they were going to that. No, instead, I'm encrypting something to them with their key, right? Uh, well, the, the point of public key cryptography, which is, once you get it, is brilliant, is in, in the old days, in order, you know, like secret decoder ring days, in order for somebody to decode it, you would have to have a shared secret. Right. Uh, and the problem is, how do I get the shared secret to you uh, right. so that, you know, you... Uh, but public key cryptography eliminates that. There are two keys. There's a public key, which I can give out, you can give out, anybody can have. All that does is encrypts. It doesn't decrypt. It only encrypts. And then there's a private key, which you keep to yourself, and you use a strong passphrase to protect. And that's your private key, and that is the decryption key. So you can give out the public key, and then that solves that whole issue of shared, you know, shared secret. Um, right. so that's is, that's such a brilliant and, and wonderful thing that it just solves all of these problems. And so you, really let me make sure I got this straight now. I'm just going. You send me your public key. I don't even have to send it to your you. Your public key. Right. Well, yeah, you send you send it to me, or I get it. I have your public key. Yes. I use that to encrypt something. I send it to you, and you can decrypt it because right. Decrypt it because you have the key. Because I have the private that's key. Because I, I have the I was private using key. My key to encrypt my stuff to you. No, no, no. I use your right. key to write something to encrypt it to you, right? Right. right. That simple thing took me three <laughs> days of yelling for people to find out. That's pretty funny. Drove me batty, absolutely batty. I did these 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 encryption geeks, and 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 the great thing is somebody said they they pointed me to and the, the nicest uh, encryption security person there is, of course, is Steve, and somebody sends me to one of his wonderful transcripts, but. I got 100 pages. No, that's you know, hard. Uh, you can't do it that way. And, right. he, yeah. and he doesn't so, do much. He th That was he way over really your head. That was down. not. He doesn't double down. No. <laughs> that no. was definitely not the right direction to send you. No. So I went, <laughs> I went absolutely batty to get this figured out. I, I Oh, I'm sorry. If I had known, I, no, I probably could have. You solved it. Because your show. Thank well, you. I actually wasn't on that oh. show. But uh, uh, you know so were, I, as in snubs, solved it. Yeah, I mean, it's too hard. It's too hard. I mean, even it's when you asked me, the, Jeff, I was like, oh, this Melvelope. I mean, for, for someone just, you know, using regular kind of Gmail, I, I went with Melvelope. So I was like, this is web-based and it works right. with Gmail. And it's just too hard. I mean, who's using, you know, not a lot of people are using Thunderbird right now. Well, that's now. the thing. It's it's a lot more straightforward in a client. Um, to right. do it on the web is it, it, both more... Tacky and, it's, yeah. yeah. It's mostly more well, difficult. this is why it should become... Risky. So when I talked about this with, with Vince Cerf, he agrees that... You know, number one, of course, they use uh, SSL. That's, that's to start off with, and and he, and he agrees that, that that we should make it easier to do this. But but when I talked to him about the what we talked about in the show before about the problem of my Google Now boarding pass, I mean his view is you encrypt up to their box. The things inside their box are not encrypted because you trust them to hold on to it, unless of course there's a warrant, right? But it's not a snooping problem then, right? And and into the box and out of the box should be encrypted, but in the box shouldn't be so that Google can then act on it to your benefit. And I agree with that architectural. Well, that's a, in Google's interest. Yeah, I know it is, but it's also in my you. interest as a user because I want to be able to get my boarding pass. I want Google now to be smart about right. it. I'm, I'm upset Google now doesn't know enough about me. Right. Yeah, that's the interesting balance because uh, true privacy, uh, obviously, <laughs> encryption doesn't work with Google now because you're hiding stuff from Google. Right, because right. the what was that what would actually be stored on Google servers would just be a jumble right. of letters, numbers, right? So they Which wouldn't be do. able to advertise or or do any personalization I, or any third party. I think app. what you got to do if you if you really want to do this is you use Gmail for, for day to day, and when you want something private, you do something else. 
Or you use Mailvelope and you don't encrypt it until it's, uh, you know, you don't have to. You, I'll tell you one thing. The airline's wow. never going to send you your boarding pass encrypted. Right. No, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so you're safe there. Right, so personal one-to-one -one communications about sensitive topics. You, yeah, you, you don't, and you don't yeah, want Google now right. to know about that anyway. Now, didn't Snowden go to the Guardian uh, uh, blogger and say, hey, I need to send you yes. something encrypted? And he was like, I don't know uh, what. Snowden exactly. wanted to use Snowden open Google. PGP. <laughs> right. And, With, and, and Glenn, Glenn Greenwald like, did, didn't figure it out. I think they did later. But well, Glenn this, but this is important. Part of the reason I'm doing all this, I have a very specific reason to do this. But as a journalism instructor... Uh, you know, I, I had this discussion uh, uh, with somebody interviewing me the, the other day. What's a journalist to do now trying to deal with the source? How do we know that we can communicate with the source? We can't. Just the metadata alone, right? The fact that, oh, this person talked to somebody at that exchange and that exchange is the New York Times, bzz, we're going to watch it. So metadata yeah. alone means that journalists cannot in any way, open way even contact uh, confidential sources. Right. So then how do you do it? Oh, the way spies have done it for a million years. You use a dead drop. Yep. Yep. But that's that becomes ridiculous. And the other thing that, that I, I've long argued that ever since the original New York Times story on the um, warrantless wiretaps, right, the part of my argument long, long since has been that what the, what the NSA actually wants to a great extent is um, baseline data so they can see anomalies. And we are the baseline. Right? Or in the words of Alexander, we're the haystack. Mm -hmm. And once we have the haystack, then they can see, aha, that's a very strange pattern there. That doesn't fit the pattern of so-and-so calling somebody. And that's things like throwaway phones. Gee, a phone that was always used, only used once in a month. Hmm. hmm. That's, that's a all. giveaway, huh? Now we can go back <laughs> and look at all the phones that were used only once in a month. Uh-oh, now I'm worried about all my development phones. <laughs> so the wire... You mean your burners? My burners. burners. <laughs> right. So the wire? The wire it's taught me everything I need to know. It's anomalous. No, the wire wouldn't work. It's anomalous behavior. And you don't want to be anomalous. No. In, in a world where they, in the words of General Alexander, collect it all. You need to develop your spycraft. That's that sounds all. Like the beginnings. Is that this is your new sponsor? Yeah, we should we should actually we should take a break <laughs> and talk. <laughs> this would be great. Just teach everybody dead drops. You know, if, come on, we've all watched those. You know, those movies where you put a you you take a piece of chalk and you put a mark on a rock and then you stick the secret code in there. And then that'd be interesting to get Steve going because I know you just did the the episode about you know how 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 much tinfoil do you put in your hat? <laughs> yes, um, which was by the way a great idea. <laughs> it is, it is a great idea. But it'd be nice to to challenge Steve outside of technology, right? If you if you take his security brain and then put it to those kinds of things. Like oh, he does that all the time. He's building a uh, device to uh, get dogs to stop barking. <laughs> you don't you don't know steve this guy's in, insane uh, he's unbelievable he's yeah unbelievable. he's insane uh we're gonna take a break and we will come back with more we are talking my friends about everything having to do with cloud and google and all of that stuff um and our show today brought to you by our good friends at legalzoom.com if you are in a business if you are in a family if you live life, you need legal documents, but uh, you don't need to get, and this is the cool thing, a lawyer to make them up for you. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but it does help you create those important legal documents. It turns out you can do it yourself with a little help from LegalZoom. Just follow their simple step-by-step -step questionnaires online, and you can incorporate S or C Corp. You can make an LLC. That's actually how I did it, and we're still using those legal papers. $99 to do an LLC or an incorporation. You got a trademark? You got a brand you want to preserve? Buzzmachine.com, smarterware.org. I would suggest a trademark. Easy to do. $169 plus the government filing fields. Hey, now, if you have a family or you have assets, you really want to protect them. Without a will, uh, the courts decide where your kids go, where your assets go. And it's $69 to create a last will on LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom makes it very easy, very effective. And I think this is the ultimate in democratization. I love this. What's interesting is 
They predate the Internet, or at least the widespread use of the Internet. LegalZoom's helped 2 million Americans over the last 12 years do all of these and, and many more legal documents for affordable price. They now have something that they didn't have when I used LegalZoom back in 2005. They have uh, attorneys. They've negotiated fixed-price attorneys. The LegalZoom uh, legal plan allows you to speak to an attorney in your state. Uh, they have profiles and unedited reviews online, so you can pick the attorney right for you. At a flat rate, fixed rate, so you can get advice. It's a perfect complement to the uh, LegalZoom document generation uh, stuff. It's really, I think this is just wonderful. This is this is empowering for all of us. Because um, a lot of, you know, you want to start a, a little startup. You don't have necessarily the money. I didn't for uh, legal fees to start that LLC. But LegalZoom made it possible. Why don't you start making your dreams come true and protect your family while you're at it? LegalZoom.com. If you use our offer code TWIG, you can take uh, 10 bucks off at, uh, per, at uh, purchase. That means that last rule is only $59. That's a good deal. LegalZoom.com. Please, when you buy, use the offer code TWIG. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for the Google Change Log. The Google Change Log. Diggity doom, boom, boom, bing, doom. And now. Gina Trapani with the Google Change Log. Google's new Maps redesign, which we covered back at uh, Google I.O. Uh, during the show, is now open to everyone. No invite required. Yay. You do have to opt in, though, to see it. Uh, so I think you go to uh, google.com slash maps slash preview, and you'll be able to get the new maps. Uh, I think we we've talked about all the new features of the new maps uh, extensively. It's a much more full screen experience with cards for local information and, and results right in map. Looks really good. And we've seen a bunch of maps updates, actually. Google Maps for I.O. OS uh, got a new new interface, better de better navigation. Uh, looks really great on the iPad uh, and uh, Google Maps for Android updated as well to match the the, the 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 desktop version. And that is rolling out slowly. I did get it on my Android devices, uh, and we talked about this a little bit as well. Latitude is no longer in, uh, but really really nice interface changes on Maps across iOS and the desktop on the web and Android. Uh, the Play Store got a huge redesign this week. Have you seen this, Leo? It's complete. Looks completely different. This is on I the did. web. Play.google.com. Basically, the the web based version now looks like the mobile version. It's got that sort of card based, uh, that Google Now kind of card layout based design. Uh, huge app icons. Uh, really kind of nice, nice, nice layouts. Uh, reviews, review functionality is a little different on individual pages. Uh, you can view a list of your apps which are installed across your devices. Uh, when you go to install an app, you'll see all your devices listed. And interestingly, I saw uh, Google Glass listed as one of those uh. apps, which kind of hints that maybe Glass will get installations from, uh. the, from the Play Store. They've had those devices before. I mean, that's been around for a while. Yeah, they've had the list of compatible devices. I really, I think that that is a real selling point on uh, it is, Android. It is. Is that I you can agree. install from the web. I'm frustrated. I, I use the next when I'm traveling, which I've been doing a lot of lately. I use the Nexus Seven to watch huge amounts of stuff, and so I'm watching Breaking Bad and all those kinds of great things um, on it. They've changed it a little bit, so it's harder to see as many shows at once and what you buy, and it's also harder to see what shows you own. It's all there and everything. Uh. But they kind of mucked it up a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. Mm. It's Otherwise, mm. it's very pretty. It's very nice. I like it all. But um, I like what they had. Before. If anybody here from Google happens to be listening, uh, my management of shows before was better. You know what is working well, though, is the recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. Is this new, the recommendation yes. engine? I like well, this. And this is doing a good job. I, everything yeah, it does a nice job. My recommendations yeah. are also uh, yeah. pretty, mine is mine good. used to when it recommended me. It used to recommend things to me that I already had installed. Yeah, Amazon does that too. You bought yeah. this, so maybe you'd like to buy it again. And then when right. you buy it again, it says, "Hey, you fool! You already bought this." Which is nice. <laughs> I stuff. know it's so stupid. <laughs> Uh, well, that's interesting. I'm getting up for an app that I tried the trial. It's pushing the the premium version, so there there's you loading, go. notifications. I, I, I mean, that makes sense. I'm, yeah. I'm like likely, but I looked at that. I glanced at it and thought I have that installed already, and then realized that I had yeah. I had installed the premium version. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks it looks really nice. One of the other one of the nice things that it does is it, it it's got that add to wish list button. Uh, front and center now on the web. That was previously only showing up devices. I didn't even realize that the Play Ooh. Store had a wish list. I didn't um, you either. can say I like, hey, I, I want this app. Oh, um, I want that. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, yeah, I wonder, I'm not sure if you can share your wish list or like, I would love to be like, oh, you know, I, I'm uh, Jeff did a nice thing for me today. I'd like to maybe buy him an app from the Play Store. It'd be nice if you can kind of just easily uh, look at somebody's wish list and gift them an app. And it seems like they're moving in that direction. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have got some Chrome for Android updates. Uh, the stable version updated with built-in Google Translate and full screen support on tablets. So if you go to a page that's in a language which is not your native language, Google Translate will prompt you to automatically translate that uh, content. And uh, just like it works on the phones now it, on tablets, uh, It'll go full screen, so so your your Omnibox or, or your address bar will kind of will will, will um, go back up into the top of the Chrome, like as you scroll, so so you get more room to read uh, just content, uh, and that's that's Chrome stable for Android, Chrome beta for Android, updated to version twenty nine, and it's got WebRTC, yay, yay. and fa faster page loads, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, soon and, be doing uh, the show, I predict. Yes, we will soon be doing the show via WebRTC on our Android devices. It'll be very exciting. We're actually looking at some hardware that might help us. We can't do it right now because of limitations with our uh, hardware, ah. uh, the Blackmagic hardware, right, Chad? The the video in card is a uh, little little finicky, but we're looking at new hardware that might work with WebRTC better. So that would solve. And there's a Chrome 29 beta for Windows, Mac, and Linux also also released. Um, and that's, uh, it seems like the, the, they're just kind of speeding up the Chrome and Not, not for, Chrome. for Chrome, Chrome OS didn't get, uh, 29, Chrome 29 didn't come to you, Jeff? Nope. Mm, and you, and you, you won't get it unless you're on the beta channel, right? I am yeah, this is, this is the beta channel. Oh, and okay. you are on the beta channel. It didn't come down. Oh, that's Let interesting. Make sure here. Yeah, that's it. We're actually behind in that sense. 29.0.1547.22 beta. They're, they're, the version numbers are nuts. Bro. <laughs> yeah. They're totally That's nuts. crazy. They're putting the build number into the version number, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that must be it. And then a uh, quick item that I missed uh, last week, the uh, that One Today charity app, I think we talked about it a while, Google, a while ago. Google released this Android app called One Today. It's basically like social charity. Um, that used to be invite only. It's now open to to everyone. So I love One Today. I use it a lot. And in fact, I uh, I just posted, I just donated to Today's Project. And I, I and I said, make it a match. So if you look at my Google Plus profile, you'll see I gave a dollar to the nonprofit pro project, uh, Raspberry Pi Materials. It's a, it gives Raspberry Pi to to girls in in uh, in tech tech courses, and I'll match your donation, and it works really well. You can you can either just give a dollar, or you can say I'll match my friends' donations up to a certain amount. So I think in this case I could match up to like sixty bucks, and I said I'll match up to ten bucks. Uh, so it's a really cool way to. You've say, already like, maxed hey. it out, by the way. I've maxed, yeah, I've maxed it out. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh, you, you should still donate. Uh, but you can only do it once a day. Uh, you can't do it more than once a day. And I find that I just give my, I, I give more, I give more money to charity, which is kind of something I want to do and more causes that I, that I care about. And it's, it's really simple. It's just your Google wallet. And sometimes most of the days I just say, okay, yeah, dollar. Sure. You know, I'm spending more than that. Is that how it works? Is just a dollar or can you give more? It's, it's just a dollar. If you want to give more, you can say I'll match up to an amount, uh, a certain amount, and they cap it. So it's it's usually I've neat. never seen an amount over sixty dollars. If your friends donate, so, so it's I a little challenge to your friends to do it's that. A challenge to your friends, great. or I can go in and, I, and it'll say, Hey, Leo donated. If you should you will you match his donation? And you'll and you'll be like, Yeah, I'll give a dollar in Leo's, and that that will count toward your match. I'm so signing up right now. One social pressure. One, one today. today. Okay. One today .google .com. And, you is. know, some projects I'm not so interested in. Others, I'm like, yeah, I really believe in this cause. So it's, I, I think it's, it's encouraged good behavior. I, I think on my, on my part. I mean, I want to give more to charity from different causes, and I definitely have. Just to be clear, you don't have to have a device that Google Wallet works on. It uses your Google Wallet to pay, but you don't have to have because none of my devices. I don't know what Google Google Wallet works on a Nexus Four. I guess right. Doesn't work on any of my uh, right, devices. Yeah, it's just, it's just if you have a Google Wallet account. Right. Yeah, and, and you get to a play. I think you get to ten bucks or fifteen bucks, and it says, "Hey, uh, will you pay your balance? You've got a balance." Oh, I, I see. They okay. they aggregate it up. That's good. And the, yeah, they aggregate it up, so you're not you're not going yeah. through the whole payment process every time. Uh, and then you just say, "Yeah, sure, pay." You know, debit my account, and they do so. And I it's nice. I, I, it's a it's a good app. Cool. Uh, and that's it. That's all I got. Learn about a new project from a nonprofit every day. Show your support by giving as little as a dollar, which is how little I'm going to give. Yeah. That's the change log. <laughs> yeah, baby. That was yes. a Memorex moment. <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that was.
Uh, so let's Gina, see. Gina, wait a second. Do you even know what I mean when I say Memorex moment? Um, should I? Is that, I don't know, is that like a commercial You're just reference? too, you're too no, young. What? <laughs> you're too young. <laughs> you guys, I think you guys think I'm a lot younger than I am. Is that, was that a commercial thing? I'm Googling. Oh, Memorex come moment. now. <laughs> I don't think she's from the era of recording tape, uh, Jeff. No, that's it. It's, it, it was the, it was better recorded with Memorex, and it has a guy sitting in front of a speaker, and he's blown back. Yeah, I love that. Memorex tape. Yeah. And okay. then they, and they had Ella Fitzgerald, is it live or is it Memorex? It's that goes even farther Memorex. back, right? Okay. Yes, it does. Okay. I Gina recall saying, the dude Fitzgerald sitting in the course. chair getting blown back from a speaker. Yeah, you saw that one. Yeah, I've seen that one. But you didn't okay. see Ella breaking the glass in the mm. Memorex ad. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah there's that, the guy. Everybody's seen that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, I'm not. I'm not as young as you think. <laughs> yeah. I do not think. By the way, I, Gina, I am as old as you think. <laughs> now that commercial, you know what? It was from 1979. So that's oh. that was one, two. That wasn't so long. You can see. New MRX3 oxide from Memorex. <laughs> what is that she's holding? Makes the difference. You get high as highs and even lower lows. Is it free for me? Nobody she's amazing. knows. <laughs> now, more than ever, we can ask is it live or is it Memorex? Wow. Even the wow. name Memorex sounds like something from science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, a Memorex up the, device. Grew up in the '80s making mixtapes, so yeah, you, you know. yeah, you know what a cassette is. Yeah, You're not yeah, that yeah. young. I grew up, yeah, yeah, I grew up in the '80s, either, early '90s, even making making mix mixtapes, <laughs> making them mix CDs. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the CDR that doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I shouldn't be asking. All right, you're right. You're right, Gina. I should be asking Chad these questions. Yeah, Chad's too young it's to true. remember anything. <laughs> yeah, except he for red hair. He, he remembers being born. That's how young he is. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it's funny when you said Memorex because I I believe that the Borat uh, DVD came in a Memorex like it was it made was made oh, that's to cute. it was made to look bootlegged right. and so yeah it right, came in a Memorex CD. I, I, don't, I don't know what this Borat is, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old. <laughs> U.S. government can no longer be trusted to protect the internet from international power grabs, says Jeff Jarvis at CrunchGov. Uh, guest guest blog post. Piece. This is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, tell us what you're saying here. No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It just it just I, I, there have been attempts to take over governance of the internet, right? Russia, Saudi Arabia, UAE, other wonderful bastions of free speech. Uh, at the last ITU, tried to put in a plan that to demand equal governance. The United States gathered together Western countries and walked out. Well, problem now is... Yeah, we don't have the moral high us. ground, do we? We do not. No. We certainly do not. Yeah. And uh, that's going to lead... John Notton wrote a wonderful column, a wonderful post. Uh, he's an observer columnist uh, saying just that, that we're going to end up with something far worse. And thank you very much, NSA. It's another, it's another impact of the NSA story. Yeah, well, that's, the, I think, the more important impact is our relationship with our allies uh, all over the world... Uh, is you know, this is always the problem when you act immorally or in or, or yes. wrongly, is it hurts your reputation. Yeah, well, of course it, we also just people look at us as stupid. I mean, when I was in Europe, I was I would apologize for being you know I made it a joke, but I'd get like, yeah hi from America I'm sorry. Yeah, I got to the point. Uh, I haven't had this problem lately, but there were there were years when I would say I was Canadian. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't had that problem lately. I Jeff, might now again. Your byline on TechCrunch. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Know, it? it is kind of cool. Kinda, it's kind of nice. But also a little um, weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pegged I'm, you as a I'll, medium guy. <laughs> I'll do it. Well, I've been doing medium, yeah. I'll do the Guardian. I've been he, does it all, he does it all, man. He does it all. That's what I like I about Jeff. He's a, yeah. yeah. He's, I, mean, I, I got to learn your today, secrets for being prolific. Writers are the original whores. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> Jeff, how do you feel about that? That's a terrible thing to say, and I take it back. I take it As all back. As opposed to TV people. Yeah, no, there's nothing worse than TV people <laughs> or radio people. If it, unless it's internet TV people, those are the worst. Or as Aaron Sorkin would call us, the pajama people. Yeah, that was... that was. He continues uh, on with his uh, uh, vendetta against the internet. The list of... Uh, there, there was a whole list of tweets of, of uh, I think on, on the rap 
of why we all hate the internet, why we all hate the newsroom. I, I could and not finish it this time. I, I, I fell asleep. I, I, the Guardian has asked me to write a piece about why I hate the newsroom. So I said, oh, crap, now you're going to make me, make me watch the whole damn thing. Oh, yeah, this is good. You're <laughs> yeah. back to your old calling as a, uh, as a TV yeah, reviewer. Yeah, yeah. so I started writing that now. Now, I love Aaron Sorkin, and I love The West Wing, and uh, actually was the only person in the world who loved Studio 60. Oh. And I know. Well, but here's the, I wonder, though, Leo, I wonder if we watch The West Wing today. Would we think it's as well? Oh, I have watched it again recently. Well, have. only the first four years. If ironically, the, the Aaron Sorkin years. As soon as he left, the thing went downhill. Uh, I but actually, I like the newsroom. I think I have enough distance from how TV is made. I mean, I, I take it with a grain of salt, but I turn on closed captioning just so I can catch every line. Yeah, they're, they're I, really I talking them. fast uh, this they're new really season. This yeah. new season, it's bad. It's really but they bad. They treat women. Terribly. Oh, I know. Genius. That is true. Terribly. That is true. Yeah. Yes, you're either a dithering fool or you right. don't know how to send an email. No, I, I agree. Right. I, that is true. That is true. Olivia Munn cannot act to save her life. Oh, it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. She's a nice person, but she's not an actor. Um, And I think Aaron Sorkin's writing parodies of himself now. Oh, it absolutely is. Absolutely is. But the reason I can't stand it is it, is it, is it tries to put a holier-than-thou patina on TV news, which is the absolute worst. I know. Of I know. what we call news. I know. <laughs> there is no, you know, those, those conversations, those aren't happening. No, no, no network newsman no. ever called the Tea Party the American Taliban. It's not even credible. No, no, no. They come into work and say, what? No trial? Oh, what the hell we got to do today? Yeah. <laughs> Right, the Zimmerman trial's right. over. We got to do news. Ugh. Anyway, um, so, well, I don't know how we got into that. I was going to say our condolences. From Member X to Ella Fitzgerald to Aaron Sorkin. I don't know how yeah, we got into that. We but this. I was going to say condolences, uh, of course, to uh, Glee fans and Gleeks. Oh. I know that you were, uh, that was Gina. Awful. Yeah, that was very sad awful. to hear. It's just Sorry. heartbreaking. That's, uh, I, yeah, that was terrible. That was terrible. That, that guy, I mean. Look, I'm going to be honest. He wasn't one of the strongest voices on the on the cat in the cast. But, but he was the hunkiest guy on the he, cast. He was, yeah, he was. I mean, they managed to find a guy who was like read pretty straight to be the like straight guy lead, yeah. which was really good. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, I don't. He was a talented guy, and he had the he had the world at his feet. But he, it's very uh, sad. Corey Monteith, very, very of course, who played uh, Finn Hudson on Glee, uh, found dead uh, Saturday in Vancouver. He's only 31 was years old. 31 years old. They're now saying it was a hellish a, childhood. Uh, earlier addiction problems. Yeah. I didn't know that he was dating Leah Michelle. I, I yeah. Felt, you know, felt yeah. He's, he is dating, yeah. Rachel, who played Rachel. So their on screen uh, romance yeah. was going on. And they were supposed to move in together. It was very, very sad. The apparently uh, combination, lethal combination of heroin and alcohol. Yeah. Uh, but he'd been having problems with drugs uh, pretty much his whole adult life. It's very sad. Yeah, he he did his his inside the actor studio uh, uh, interview you was mentioned very telling. Like, talked tweet. about yeah. Yeah, he, yeah 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 he talked about his struggles with addiction he was, he, he and, and you know you're you're always in recovery. Open. Yeah. Yeah, he was very open, uh, and you're always in recovery as anyone who has dealt That's with addiction. Right. You know, it does, doesn't go away. It's it's not a problem that you solve and then put behind you. Yeah. Um, so very sad. You're right, you're right, Leo. We we yeah, this show of all shows needs to uh, pay a tribute. Yeah. To Corey. Yeah, if the guy who uh, invented Chipotle died, we'd say something. <laughs> it's just, it's only right. I wondered how you're going to create a transition out of this moment. <laughs> there you go. That's why you're the pro. Wasn't exactly elegant or... <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. It doesn't have to be. It just has to get us on. Uh, Eric Schmidt says Google's relationship with Apple has improved. Well, I don't know what he means Steve by... Died? What? <laughs> He says these are two proud, well-run, different companies. He's talking at the billionaire conference. I would guess if you go to the Allen and Company, have you? You must have been there, Jeff. You seem like the oh, kind God, of no. oh, billionaire God. hobnobber. No, hey, hey, no, no, no. I no, think no. once you get to that level, it's all very collegial, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the rich guys. Larry, Larry wasn't there because he was at the wedding taking pictures. Right, mm. right. Um. And this is the conference that he was seen uh, with the with the Moto X, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Very blatantly carrying it around, using it. Yeah, very lots of clear photos. Yeah. Just to drive, he said, "You know what? I'm going to drive Leo crazy." <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, he had a phone. I don't know what it was. It's very attractive. <laughs> Not the phone. You know secrets about phones. It looks, it's a beautiful looking. It is. It looks like uh, who says on uh, Elephant Android last night? We're saying it looks a little bit like an apple, like a mouse. Like the back of it looks like the yeah. the mighty is the yeah. mighty mouse. I wonder what it. I wonder what it feels like. Hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what kind of set always on sensors it's got. I wonder what kind of battery technology makes it <laughs> makes it go an entire week without ever dying. I wonder how it's gonna dress me in the morning and make my breakfast. <laughs> I wonder how attractive the screen is. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder how cheap it's gonna it's gonna be. What the marketing campaign is gonna be like. <laughs> That's a great face. Oh, he's going to blow. He's going to blow. <laughs> so here's some good news. Uh, the Pope is going to forgive sins via Twitter. Oh, God. Hey, how's that? How yeah, about that for modern, huh? Oh. Indulgences. It's not the onion. I didn't even know you could still get plenary indulgences. I didn't either. I was proud to have seen them printed by Gutenberg. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, God, I'm stunned. I, you know, I, I <laughs> You're a Catholic, to, Gina. Explain this. Uh, I was raised Catholic. I went through through 12 years of, yeah, 12 years of Catholic school. Nuns, pleated skirts, the whole nine. And, you know, I saw this oh, story. Oh, that would have been so cute to see you uh, in the pleated skirts. It was not cute. It was not. <laughs> there was nothing. Oh, come on. It's kind of hot, actually, right? It yeah, it is. Going, the saddle shoes. Let me get oh. out of here. Yeah, it was <laughs> it's not. Listen, <laughs> I went to an all-girls Catholic school. I can tell. Not hot, okay? Okay, it was, all right. It, right. Was, it was lots of girls uh, okay. who were not around, who were not around boys. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it, uh, uh, I saw the story, and there was a half of me that was like not at all surprised, and the other half of me that was like, "What are they thinking? People yeah. indulge? Oh, it's so ridiculous." Listen, okay, this is I'm the, not going to go is, on my anti. -Catholic this is the best cause... quote ever, and and this is from a Monsignor uh, Claudio Maria Celli, the president of the Pontifical Council for Social Communication. He told a a uh, a journal that's actually called. The Sacred Apostolic Penitentiary. You don't obtain an indulgence like you get a coffee from a vending machine. It is not enough uh, just to watch a mass online or follow the Pope via live streaming on your iPad or by connecting uh, to pope2u.net. <laughs> this is a quote. These are just devices. What really counts is the tweet that the Pope will send you from Brazil. That's what counts. <laughs> that it will produce genuine spiritual fruit in the heart of the person. That's got to be a translation problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Pope's tweets haven't 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 grown any spiritual fruit my, in my heart. The tweet heart. from the Pope has produced a spiritual fruit in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> When I was Fruta in Rome, di Carona. Oh. When I was in Rome, <laughs> your, there was your a Italian priest. accent is really good. It is pretty good. <laughs> it's really good. Gina knows it in her soul. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not. Me, I'm not laughing. Uh, every every religion is is has its its deep absurdities, uh, powerful uh, spiritual meaning, as well as often it's strange uh, to uh, the outsider uh, uh, traditions. I don't know, though, that tweeting really, uh, uh never mind. <laughs> well, God tweets. God, yeah, I love God's tweets. I read Jesus's tweets, too. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus H. Christ. He's the best tweeter. Or no, is he on, uh, he's on, uh, Google Plus. Jesus H. Christ. Uh Oh, There's okay. one on Twitter that I follow. Let's there, see. Is, There's there is one Jesus. On I do follow Jesus on Twitter. We're going to hell. Or maybe it's Almighty God. Almighty yeah. God is on Twitter. Yes, no, Almighty, Almighty God, God is on Twitter, but I think Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> Let me just, I think I circled him. <laughs> I, ha <laughs> I have him in the uh, prophets circle. Let me see. Just Yeah, Jesus H. Well, actually, there's several Jesus H. Christ. There's two. Um, I'm not sure which one I follow. Um, this is, uh, he works at the big man, lived in Rome, attended Jew school, it says. I don't. I don't think that's the one I'm looking for. Let's see if I can. 
<laughs> Almighty God on Twitter. I'm into creating universes, smiting people, writing holy books, and listening to prayers. Yeah, there you go, baby. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about all of this. There's quite a few. There's Hi, several. It's Jesus. me, Jesus, exclusively on Fiverr. You might recognize me from the Bible. That That's Mel not Gibson him. Movie. That's <laughs> not him. Coming. Well, you'll see. Come on, Chad. You're gonna you're gonna send us you're gonna send us all to downstairs. Oh well. Oh, good news. <laughs> Just tweet the Pope, and you can get a plenary indulgence and spend less time in purgatory. By the way, that's what that's for, by the way. Right, Just it's for spending indulgence. less time in it, purgatory. So exactly. you don't, I mean, you're going to hell anyway. But, <laughs> well, wait a minute. No, no you're no, going to purgatory, purgatory the, not hell. It's a temporary stop to heaven. Yeah. But purgatory is hell light. Oh, I thought it was... Uh... I thought it was just sort of a, a pit stop. No, that's limbo. Way. You're thinking of limbo, where oh, the babies go. Oh, so it's the oh, New Jersey right Turnpike. Babies, go. babies right. go to limbo, because they because mm -hmm. original sin, you can't let them off the hook. Right, but it's not really their fault. But well, the purgatory is being stuck between stations on the R line. I think purgatory is hell light. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're right. Where's we Father forever? Robert Balliser when we need him? We have an actual priest you in our panel, on our stable. Well, I, think, I think he might be uh, uh, putting pins in a voodoo doll of you right now. So. No, 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 no. Robert, <laughs> one of the things that, that's one of the you great know, things about great. Robert. He's great. He's relaxed. He's cool. He's calm. He's probably tweeting right now. <laughs> The only one who dies in a state of grace can be in purgatory, and therefore He's no one who is in purgatory will, will remain there forever or go to hell. So if you die in a state of grace, you're going to go to purgatory because you get a little bit of punishment. Yeah, you got you to serve a little time. You got to serve a little time, but you're going to go to heaven. You're not going, you're to, going hell. to heaven. It's just a stop. And so the Pope, can, in this case, can say, no, you don't have to go so long. I'm going to give you a plenary indulgence, just a little less, only a million years in purgatory instead of, you know, two million or something. So right. who is the Martin Luther of the Twitter age? Yes, I can't. The whole thing, the 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 mixture of medieval uh, superstition with Twitter, it's so bizarre. <laughs> it's uh, unique. <laughs> it's, it's just so bizarre. Because indulgence is that is a medieval. I believe that is a uh, a yeah. later. I was honored to, to see, and Gutenberg, the Gutenberg was even mine, the, the, the indulgences that were first printed on Gutenberg's presses, and then Martin Luther's tracts against them right. um, also printed on his presses. Yes, it was one of the extremes of the Catholic yeah. Church that Luther was inveighing against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, I am not dissing anybody's spirituality or religion. I res highly respect that. Um, but you got to admit, some of these things are a little strange. <laughs> yeah. Lord. When, I, when I was at when I was in Rome at the Google event, there was a there was a priest uh, who was there who edits some major Catholic art culture magazine. I don't remember the name of it. Very very nice guy. And so Vince Surf is on stage and he's talking about how we have to get more people on the internet. And he says, "I want to convert four billion people." And the priest says, "Me too." <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love it. Um. Microsoft is suing U.S. Customs, saying, you guys, you talked to Google, but you didn't talk to us. Uh, apparently, Microsoft has a ban against uh, uh, phones made by Motorola. And the ITC, the International Trade Commission in Washington, issued the import ban May of last year. They decided that Motorola devices infringed a Microsoft patent for the way mobile phones synchronize calendar events with other computers. Um, but they haven't been blocking the Motorola phones. The droids are still coming. By the way, I wonder if this has something to do with why Google's making the new phones in the U.S. Oh, interesting. Oh, Possibly. Interesting, huh? Hmm. U.S. Great. Customs and Border Protection, according to Microsoft, had secret meetings with Google. I think the word secret is a judgment call. But they did talk to Google, and they decided to let the Motorola phones enter the country, even though Google has not removed the uh, offending technology, Microsoft said. Um, and Customs is uh, ignoring its obligation based on secret discussions. This is in the Microsoft uh, pleading. Google's response is, U.S. Customs appropriately rejected Microsoft's effort to broaden its patent claims to block Americans from using a wide range of legitimate calendar functions like scheduling meetings on their mobile phones 
We're confident the court will agree. And uh, that's because there's now a lawsuit. Um, the ITC order is in effect until Microsoft's patent expires in 2018. I think that could very well be why Google said, "Let's, you know what? Let's. We don't know how this is going to shake out. Let's just start making these phones in the U.S." Well, we get we get goody points anyway, right? Right. Yeah, and it's a way to differentiate. Uh, you know, with the, with the Apple, with the issues with Apple, you know, manufacturing overseas and say that made in the USA. Right. No, I think it's a great thing. I think they should yeah. put the American flag on the back of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's approved by the <laughs> NSA too. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft said that they had no idea that Google and Customs were meeting back in April uh, until Customs in June 24th announced that they were going to allow the phones in the country. I, you know what? If I were Microsoft, I would be pissed. So I think uh, you got some splaining to do. On the other hand, I'm th not thrilled that Microsoft claims that, you know, we have to license synchronizing calendars. Synchronizing calendars, from Microsoft. Yeah. Plug. That's how this stuff works. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to get your picks, your tips, your numbers coming up. But first, a word from 99designs. This is where you get your designs. If you're a company looking for great-looking assets, whether it's a menu for your business, a Facebook home page for your business, maybe a new website, maybe a T-shirt. That's what we use 99designs for. Um, digital marketing collateral, print marketing collateral, logos, Mobile apps, 99designs can do it all. The way it works, you go to 99designs.com. They'll give you a great consultation with their San Francisco-based design team. And then you start a contest. There currently are 1,992 open contests. Uh, by the way, there are 238,183 designers on 99designs who are ready and willing to, to give you a design to send you a spec to say, this is what I think. You can work back and forth with them. Pick the designer Pay them and get a great design for people who really know what they're doing. Last month, 99designs paid out $1.7 million to designers. $1.7 million? This is such a great idea. It's a marketplace for designers to get together with people who need good-looking art, whether it's a coaster, <laughs> a book. Here's the deal. If you want to try this, we want to invite you to do so. Visit 99designs.com slash Twig and get a $99 power pack of services absolutely free. You get more designer time with the power pack. 99 Designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design in their marketplace. That means you're going to get about twice as many designs, which is nice. We also have a, a toll free number you can use if you prefer 800 513 1678. That's just for Twit listeners. 800 513 1678. 99designs.com slash twig. Try it out. It's a why it, the making the world look better one design at a time. All right, Gina Trapani, it's time for you and your tip of the week. By the way, Mailvelope, great tip. I just installed it. Oh, you did oh. install yeah. it? Yeah. Even though it, it had been hacked, but it had been it it's is not, very it's, nice. Yeah. The, the hack you has to give them uh, physical access to your computer. I don't I'm not worried okay, about so that. Okay, so that doesn't nice. count. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, well, my tip this week is if you didn't make it to Paris this summer, or you're not uh, going to, <laughs> uh. you can travel up to the top of the Eiffel Tower in Google Street View. Even if you didn't uh, make it to Paris, it's hard to get to the top of the Eiffel Tower. It is, I and it's crowded, and it's hot. Gina, am I going to be scared pain. of this? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jeff, sorry, don't look. Um, <laughs> Google has added uh, Street View imagery of, the, of the, the, the two main floors of the Eiffel Tower to Google Maps, and they also set up this... Um, kind of uh, this whole site about the history of the Eiffel Tower with with archival photos and some and some recordings and uh, all the information about the Eiffel Tower that you, you could ever want and that's actually let me see that that don't go that far. address is <laughs> yeah there's some imagery there from the top of the top of the tower oh turn, turn. come on <laughs> really jeff <laughs> no uh, the google culture let me hug that 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 beam <laughs> <laughs> If you go to google.com slash cultural institute slash home, you'll see that there's a featured Eiffel Tower collection. I love the Eiffel Tower. It gives you all kinds of information about, the, about the birth the of the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, Tower and, the, and the plans and the inauguration, its first visitors. But if you just want to go to the top and see the view, uh, you can do so in maps. It's a little bit of a cloudy day, so not a lot of sun, uh, but some really good imagery. And you don't have to stand in the line or, or worry about um, your fear of heights, unless you're Jeff. That is a long <laughs> line in the summer anyway. 
It so, is. Yeah. It's, I, I, I've been up there, and it was wonderful, but oh, it is, it's, it's, a, well it's a process. Getting up and there. there's, restu there's restaurants up there, too. You can get reservations to go to the restaurants up there. And mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love, well, I'm going to Paris in December for Le Web. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh. My f one of my speak favorites. Speak or to broadcast or both? Uh, speak. Oh, good. Good for you. Yeah, Loic just uh, sent I've me an invitation. I always wanted to go to Le Web. The, the, the timing just doesn't work out for me. With it's kind of a rotten now. time. It's December in Paris is not ideal. Have I showed you my picture from the uh, Eiffel Tower? No, let's see it. There's something a little odd about it. Chad Ooh. picked up right away on Ooh, it. Ooh, yeah, I did too. <laughs> Ooh. That's that's real. Good, Gina. Stay innocent, Gina, please. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking. I, 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 don't... I just... I just got it. It's oh, you saw it? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, that's, wow. <laughs> it's the snap pee problem. It's not on, uh, it's not on uh, Google Maps, though. So don't worry. <laughs> okay. But that's why you don't want to go in the snow. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those French. <laughs> They're just, it's probably, it's probably Germans that did that, though. You realize. No French. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. German tourists. It's always the German tourists. Uh, Jeff Jarvis, your number of the week. Well, I have two because the first one I have to deliver to Gina. I looked it up. It is a 15-day return policy. Oh, it is 15 days. that's yes. a bummer. I emailed it to you. You have to. You have to begin no, the you're not. No, the, the one is a great days. phone. There's nothing wrong with the one. <laughs> oh, not, not, now, now when he's holding his new whatever it is, he's going to be rubbing it on you, Gina. No, no, I Always. won't do that. I will not uh, do that because a set-top box is not a good replacement for a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm just I got to say, I really love the one so much. I think I'm going to hold on to it. And if I love the Moto X, I will find it in my development budget to purchase one. There, there <laughs> are things that the, uh, that the one does that uh, you, you really will not want to get, give up, I think. Yeah, yeah. I really I like the fair. speakers of the front. I, I love it. I love that's it. That's a great phone. I, as I'm long as you're it. getting good battery life, and that's probably the Google experience talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is your number then? So, uh, Google, according to a story in ZDNet, uh, based on a panel of HR people, tech companies, Google gets 2 million applications for five to 7,000 openings a year. Oh. oh. I'd like to go to work for Google. Wow. That depresses me. Uh, would you, would you take a job if Google offered you a job? Certain jobs, yes. Like if it were prestigious enough? Well, no, no, no. If it's, 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 here's, here's the thing about Google that fascinates me is that they actually are a company that's changing it, the world. The world. And I agree. Part of that I agree. would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I work in my ways to try to, you know, pull up drowning newspapers and then get kicked for it and whatever I do now, and that's fine, and uh, try to give everything. But that, the idea of working for a company that's changing the world, that would be in some way that, that ha helps, that would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I'm not applying yet. Uh, we're searching for a new dean for my school, so we can see. Oh. Um, uh -huh. Are you Are you up for the job? No, no, no. I didn't want to. Again, here's here, because if I were dean, I could no longer use the f word in Twitter. So <laughs> <laughs> really? That seems so unfair. <laughs> I Pope, I understand, I but uh, dean. Yeah. Can you give yeah. plenary indulgences? <laughs> <laughs> Only to you, Leo. Only to you. <laughs> you indulge a lot. You yeah. are indulging me right now. I know you are. So some other numbers from this story. Half of Twitter's staff has been there less than half, less than a year. Uh, the median age of Twitter staff is 30. Uh, Cisco held a training session for Generation X managers of Generation Y employees, which I found amusing. And finally, I love this. Google held a bring your parents to work day and 5,000 showed up. Wow. That's really funny. Isn't that you funny? You can see it. Can't you see all the Google yeah. the Googlers sort of like, like guiding their parents around campus? And you know their parents are like, I want to see this free gourmet food and these like massage areas and these nap pods. <laughs> yeah. So great. That is really cool, actually. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> bring your parents yeah. to work day. Good God. Man, maybe one of my kids will get a job at Google and <laughs> show me around. Show me around. And the problem is, Leo, all the parents who went are younger than us. 
Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> oh. Oy, I brought oy, Edda oy, oy, from oy, my oy. glass fitting, and I was like, it's your first visit to Google. You might work here someday. <laughs> here's a here's a fun little one. Ed Bot gave us, this is my uh, tool of the uh, week. Ed Bot gave us this uh, when we were talking about privacy and uh, so forth on Twit uh, this week. It's privacyfix.com. And if nothing else, it's kind of interesting to learn how much you're worth to Google. So you install this. It's a uh, Chrome uh, extension, privacyfix.com. You can log into your Google account. You can see what websites are sharing data about you. You can see what tracking cookies you have. <clears throat> but the fun one, I think, and by the way, it gives me different results. Oh, that's because I'm not logged into my Google search. Here, let's log in. If I log into my Google search real quickly here, um, it tells you how much, based on what you, information you give to Google, how much you're worth to Google. And uh, in my case, it was like $54 a year. I don't know how accurate it is, but I think it's a very, it's a fun thing anyway. Well, what's interesting about that is I've been arguing that media companies should follow the example of Google. And the problem for media companies is they don't know anything about you. So you're all kind of worth the same and that's not very much. Right. Right. So the fact that you can be worth more to them because they can target the advertising better and be more relevant and have more performance for those ads as a result, that's exactly what media companies should be doing. And you can turn on various things. Uh, you know, I, it depends on how you feel about all of this stuff, but they've got a health bar which you can enable that will tell you as you go to a site what that site's doing, what it knows about you, uh, if you know how it treats government requests and things like that. Um, so it still thinks I'm only worth uh, $16.37 a year. But I, damn it, I know I'm worth more than that. I'm 63 bucks and 24 cents. There you go. Google makes about this much per year from ads at your level of activity. Interesting. That's interesting, interesting huh? huh? And then oh, from cool. there, you can turn off things uh, if you wish. It gives you access to the inside to the Google dashboard where you can turn features on and off. Um, yeah, interesting. This, these uh, pre per search revenue estimates come from a site called Trefis, T R E F I. See, what should happen is somebody in the chat room raises the third party cookies issue. What should happen is that A, media should learn to follow an example, and B, they should say that if you turn on ad blocking, here's how little you're worth to us. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Bring up a conversation from last week. Here's how much you're That's an interesting us, idea. And here's how little you're supporting journalism if you use that stuff. Yeah. I don't like it. Privacyfix.com uh, is the website uh, we mentioned. It's free to install and play with, and it's interesting. Yeah. Gina Trapani yeah. is at smarterware.org. That's her blog. She also, though, uh, works on a lot of very interesting projects like to do text.com, brand new version just came out a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Think Up, which is a great Think Twitter up. analytic tool. And, uh, and she's building a Raspberry Pi that will automatically diaper her baby. Oh, my God, that'd be so great. <laughs> I got to talk to Steve about that. And there's, there's some, some diapers are no problem. Most diapers are no big deal. But, man, once in a while you get that really bad one. Yeah, when you, it comes to ooh, babies, it's more wow. pumpkin pie than raspberry pie. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> man. You just really want a robot take care of that. I try to make myself scarce when I suspect one of those is coming up. Bye. Just, See you hey. later. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're the greatest, the greatest you. thing is the look <laughs> of oomph and then satisfaction when the kid's done it. I know. It's so cute. <laughs> Yeah. It is kind of cool. Abby used to go behind furniture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she had a diaper on. She wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's right. Yeah, they go. It's instinct, right? To yeah. Kind of to hide. Go in a corner, to a little hide. privacy. Yeah, a little yep, privacy, yep. please. <laughs> it's cute. Babies are cute. Not as cute as cats. Oh, I don't know. Kittens. Kittens, Kittens are cute. Kittens and babies. Kittens They're... and babies. They go together, don't they? Yeah, they do. They do. Jeff Jarvis is at buzzmachine.com. That's where he blogs. Both Gina and Jeff, Google Plus him. you got to circle him on Google Plus. Lots of great content. But buzzmachine.com. His books uh, are many and available everywhere. Just search for Jeff Jarvis. The best, well, the newest is Public Parts. And then there's the Gutenberg the Geek, now in German. In Gutenberg German der Gutenberg Nerd. Der nerd. <laughs> We're not making that up. Nope. And he is offering plenary indulgences on his Twitter account. As we speak. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We do this week at Google every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 2100 UTC on twit.tv. You can watch live, but if you can't get here, 
Uh, well, we do, do have uh, audio and video on demand after the fact at twit.tv slash twig or wherever you get your podcast. So please subscribe. That way you won't miss an episode. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on This Week in Google.